a shipwreck in the middle of an atoll in the middle of nowhere. The most promising spot of this trip and such an eerie place. This reefy wall is the only thing separating this boat from a thousand meters of dark blue water populated by plenty of sharks and hopefully some big doggies, the reason why we were here. This trip took us another day of traveling and a hundred miles later we were dropping anchor in the most mysterious place I've been. I wondered what happened to these people. What are the odds of someone coming to rescue if you wreck here? Diving for the first time in a place like this is a very hard feeling to describe. While the shipwreck was a strong reminder of the risks involved in diving so remote, there's also something quite liberating about facing your fears and just throwing yourself into the unknown. This is the most addictive feeling in both traveling and spearfishing. We had no idea what we would find, and that's exactly why we were there. The reef was the most beautiful I've seen. So much life and color. We could stay the whole day filming there, but our goal for this spot was clear. One big fish. The drop-offs are insane, but the area was just too big, so we couldn't find the right pressure points for doggies. It's hard to leave such a beautiful place, but when you are this remote, you also have to balance your risks. This is completely exposed, with no chance for shelter if bad weather comes. So we decided to move to Yet, a new archipelago, which would be our little piece of paradise. This new area could have not made a bigger contrast to the previous spot. We went from crazy, scary, exposed offshore to the most beautiful bay you could imagine. I'm not gonna lie, it felt good to be somewhere with some nice, easy diving. On the upcoming days, we decided to explore all the little islands and atolls around us. We found some great drop-offs with a lot of life. And at this point, we were relying on fish on pretty much all of our meals. So we had to make sure we got enough for dinner. We were now focused on making the most out of every day, breaking personal bests in different species and looking for that one big dogtooth tuna. Hunting big doggies is a game of patience and teamwork. There's no room for egos and everyone must do their part. Either shooting small bait fish, being safety diver, or just watching each other's back while fighting monsters. Chasing dog tooth tuna is is nothing but teamwork, you know. And anybody that wants to go out otherwise is is crazy. They're, they're the toughest fish in the ocean. 
by far, you know, like pound for pound, the toughest fish in the ocean. And my favorite, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Judd really wanted Brett to get a nice one. So for the last few days, he had been shooting bait fish, giving his brother some great opportunities on a couple monsters, including a possible world record fish. Unfortunately, a little bit of bad luck and some sharks in the mix made for a few lost fish. Sharks were pretty hungry here. First time I saw one choking on a jobby. As we changed spots, it was finally Judd's turn to make one drift on a very good looking drop off. Crazy clear visibility and a corner facing straight into the current. It was tailor made for a resident monster. And just like that, after spending most of his time shooting fish for others, karma did its part. Hunting doggies is a metaphor for life. You get one opportunity, maybe, and what you do with that opportunity is gonna define whether you either capture the fish or not. And you have to act quick, you have to be ready at all times, and you have to be lucky. All those things have to come together to land one of those beasts and most of the time you're not going to get them. That's what Ernest Hemingway was all about, you know, the old man in the sea wasn't just a story about a guy who caught a marlin, it was a story about the obstacles in life and how you may think that you didn't get what you wanted, the old man didn't get the marlin, but at the end of the day he did get what he was looking for. This ended up being the best day of our trip with big doggies, mackerel, and even a selfish. And this catch would be even more important than usual. We would slowly make our way back through a different archipelago. And we were not sure if the locals would even allow us to dock on the island. And like other places in the world, you can't just buy your way into these islands. You need to show respect and be honest with your intentions and they'll decide if you deserve to be there or not. So we gave them the best gift we could, our catch. Money has a relative value, especially in these places, but food is universal. The kids were thrilled watching these big fish and soon enough the chief of the village welcomed us and agreed to show us their little piece of paradise the next morning. That whole walk that we went on with Temo was awesome. I mean, he taught us about the entire village. There's kids running around on rocks at full speed, and here we are tiptoeing like we're walking on, you know, knives. And, you know, you forget those little things, especially having kids. And I, I thought to myself, if I could bring my kids over here for two weeks, what lessons of life could they learn? I think it's just a reality check for us and it only strengthens the trip because it makes those quiet moments walking around the village to appreciate looking up at a school that overlooks paradise, that has an ocean view, and at the same time they're learning what a red light and a green light and what a yellow light means in English. And you know, we forget sometimes in life that it's the simple things that keep the world going. The way I look at it is you can't let these little obstacles like a generator or the fact that you missed the best fish of, the, of your life. <laughs> you can't let those things uh, uh, ultimately affect. Yeah, they're gonna, those things will might get you down, but you come back the next day and you overcome it. This trip wasn't about the fish. It was about exploring and all the challenges that come with it. And I'm not talking about diving deep or the sharks, but it having the willingness to connect, to even give up on fishing days, so we could truly immerse ourselves in a different reality. You know, it's always different 
you can always go further. There's always more to learn. And that's why we want to do this for the rest of our lives.